This is Robotics 101. It's a series of Zoom calls, workshops that are going to take place over Zoom. It's going to be a series of demonstrations. If, for example, you're a member of the South African Air Force Eagles Robotics Club, I see some of you out there. Um, if you have a problem, so you've typed up code for your robot, you put it in a robot, you're getting error codes. I don't think this is a correct forum because people are going to get bored if I'm plowing through code looking for errors. The better way to do this thing would be for you to email me your code. If you can't find the errors in your code, you can email it to me. If you're looking for resources, information, you can either email me or you can spend some time on in, at robotscience.co.za. Um, so who am I? I'm Coach Michael. I've spent many years assisting youngsters, mostly school going age, to learn a little bit about robotics and get started. Um, we've got Andre Hoffman from the South African Institute of Electrical Engineers on this call. And then we've got Nando as one of our suppliers. You're welcome to use whichever supplier of your choice. So what you're seeing now, that's what's going to happen in each session. There'll be a what's coming up. So next week, we're going to look at probably machine learning. Um, then there's going to be a little bit of a safety briefing. What can happen when you work with electronics, you can plug in power to a circuit and you can actually have a battery explode, a capacitor can explode. Also, when you're stripping off a piece of wire, you could actually have a little piece of that wire. When you use the clippers, you could have a piece of wire flick into your eye. So if you don't need reading glasses, you can acquire a pair of these glasses They cost from 20 Rand to 80 Rand, depending on how stylish you want to be. But this will stop stuff from going in your eyes. Then the other thing you need, so the main things you want to protect when working on robots is you want to protect your fingers and you want to protect your eyes. So these are quite nice gloves. You'll notice with a pair of gloves that I'm wearing, I've cut some of the fingers off because obviously you lose fine motor control. If you just wear the gloves like this. So that's an idea, is to try and protect your fingers. Remember, soldering iron gets pretty hot. This one runs between 320 degrees to 340 degrees, depending on the work you're doing. Oh, these are reading glasses, plus one reading glasses from this game, so you get a bit older, your eyes aren't so sharp. The nice thing about these is it helps me to see fine details, but it also stops stuff going in my eyes. So that's an idea next time you go with mom and dad to this game. Get yourself a pair of reading glasses plus one or plus half because you're young and your eyes are good. This is a CAD drawing of a fitting for a robot that I'm going to show you in just a moment. Okay, so this robot here is a Primo robot. It's a very nice beginner robot. It's got an Arduino Uno circuit over here. And if I turn it over, what you'll see in the background here is you've got a battery holder. Now, if you look, this is a lithium battery. Don't leave this charging unattended. You can cause a fire that can burn your house down. So be very careful. This side here is plus. This flat side is minus. The button side is plus. These are not typically consumer batteries where everything is clearly marked like you might find on an Energizer AA battery. So you have to use a little bit of extra thinking power. Over here, you'll see if you look closely, and you'll build one of these robots hopefully soon, there's a plus and a minus. So we obviously follow the polarity and we put the battery in there. And it takes two batteries and they're wired in series. So you put the other battery the other way. So the one battery faces the one way and the other battery faces the other way, then they're correctly in the robot. Now, if you are one of our SAAF Eagles, you either have this robot, or maybe you have this robot, which is partially assembled. Whichever robot you have, it's a good idea not to run the robot and run the robot and run the robot till the batteries are flat, because when you completely discharge a lithium battery, you're gonna damage the chemistry of the cell. So what you wanna do is you wanna acquire a charger. These chargers are relatively low cost. You can get them from your local China Mall. 
Obviously now with this coronavirus pandemic, I'm not advocating anybody go anywhere, but uh, the other option is uh, on the resources page, there'll be a link you can send Nanda at Mantec an email and you can get these directly from him or you can buy them from us. We're going to be selling some parts as part of this program, um, but we don't want to force people to have to get stuff from us. If you can find stuff cheaper somewhere else, we're very comfortable with that. So what we're going to do now with the rest of this meeting is we're going to solder up a little circuit and let's have a look at that circuit diagram. There it is. This video was brought to you by the Paramount Group, the Technology Localization Implementation Unit of the Department of Science and Technology and the Africa Aerospace and Defense Expo Youth Development Program. In this video we will show you how to solder a small circuit on a block of scrap wood you may have lying around. If you have never done any soldering before then ask your instructor for a few scrap electronic parts and try using them and your soldering iron to make up a few butterflies and animals like in these images before you make the circuit in this video. The first step is to mark the block of scrap wood or plastic with some lines that are the width of a typical school ruler. If the video is a little bit jerky that's because we've increased the speed of the video so you won't get bored. If you are working with a block of wood you can take some wood screws and push them a little bit into the wood and then screw them all the way in. In the junk box at the Robot Science Workshop I found some old wire that can be used to make the positive and negative power rails to which we are going to solder the parts. Hold the wire in place over the nails or screws or bolts in the base onto which you're going to build your electronic heartbeat circuit. Now twist the wire around the heads of the screws or nails. It looks easy but take your time and use the opportunity to learn how to handle the tools and the wire so as to get the best result. Now look at the diagram of how to lay out the physical circuit. Start with the light emitting diodes and twist the wires around the positive power rail which is indicated in the drawing with the red line. Once the long leads of the LEDs are twisted around the plus power rail you can touch on where the two wires meet with a soldering iron. Please look out for our upcoming video on how to select a decent soldering iron that is capable of doing high quality electronics grade soldering at a reasonable price. Never do any soldering unless the tip of the iron is freshly wiped and is a gleaming silvery color. The flat spot on the body of the LED which is also closer to the short leg indicates the cathode. The cathode is orientated towards the negative side of the circuit which in this instance is towards the bottom. You can use different values to the values we are showing here. Between 47 kilo ohms and 220 kilo ohms would give the best results. The electrolytic capacitors can also be changed to vary the flashing rate of the circuit. Here you will see we've already placed the 100 kilo ohm resistors and we're now placing the 1 kilo ohm current limiting resistors that prevent the LEDs from drawing too much current and getting burnt out. Now we can take the NPN transistors and bend the leads into shape just like in the drawing. Almost any NPN transistor will work in this circuit but here we are using a 2N3904. Do not bend the leads right up against the body of the part as doing that can cause the leads to break off. Notice how in the drawing the face of the transistor is orientated upwards on the left and the transistor on the right hand side the face is facing downwards. In other words the flat side is up on the transistor on the left, the rounded side is up on the transistor on the right. It is important to ensure that the circuit works that the transistors are connected in this manner. If your circuit does not work once built, this is the first thing you should check for. If you look at the electrolytic capacitor, you will notice a stripe with minus markings down the one side. That is the negative side of the part. The short leg is also on the negative side. Take care to mount this part correctly, just like in the drawing. 
Wear safety goggles when handling electrolytic capacitors as these can explode if connected in a circuit the wrong way round or to a higher voltage than what they are rated for. The value of the electrolytic capacitors used in the circuit is 10 microfarads but you can also try using other values for faster and slower flashing rates. In this circuit you should use electrolytic capacitors with a minimum rating of 16 volts or more for safety reasons even if you run your circuit on a lower voltage. The last piece of the puzzle is to link the wires to the base of each transistor. We are going to use some insulated breadboard jumper wire here but you can also use wire that is not insulated just take care that the wires do not touch where they cross over just like in the drawing. Once the circuit is complete you can add a battery clip like this to the circuit which will make connecting power easy. Notice how we bend the ends of the power rails into loops to thread the power connector leads through so they will last a little longer and won't simply bend a few times and break off. Notice how if you've connected everything up right the moment you attach power to the circuit the LEDs will start flashing. This circuit will run on any voltage between 6 and 12 volts. To be safe do not put higher voltages into this circuit as the capacitors could explode and cause injury. This soldering iron is available for 245 rands from Mantec. You never want to leave a soldering iron switched on and unattended. So we've got the soldering iron set on its lowest temperature. The point has taken the solder very nicely. What you can do is wipe away the excess solder does say degrees Celsius but I'm not too sure if that is a genuine read back from the tip thermometer dial or if it's just hotter and colder on the heating element. We'll investigate this iron a little bit later on but I'm quite pleased with the results so far and you'll see that this soldering iron is plenty hot enough to get the job done and that's on the lowest temperature. So that's pretty encouraging. And that's a wonderful join. That's not bad. If a soldering iron is too cold, the solder will form lumps and clumps and it won't be terribly easy to work with. But if the soldering iron is too hot, that's also not great. Notice how we go in quite quickly and we get out quite quickly. Even for quite challenging joints, I've used the soldering iron on its lowest temperature setting. And I would advise you to, from the outset, set it to the lowest temperature setting and use it like that. The thing about soldering, folks, is it's a practical type of an activity. It's not something you read books about. You actually get a soldering iron, get some electronic stuff, and just get on with doing the soldering yourself. And the more soldering you do, the better it will get. So you can see this soldering iron is quite capable of getting in quickly, soldering the joint and getting out again. This iron is worth every single cent of 245 Rand. Don't leave soldering irons on all the time or overnight because you'll come back and find that the tip is gone and then you've got to try and retin the tip but you might, might end up with pitting on the tip which is not great. Make sure the soldering iron is unplugged from the main supply because you can get a shock. You can undo here and remove these parts. This is quite nice because that is a standard tip. These are quite common and quite easy to obtain replacement tips. Undo this part here. Take your fingernail and you catch your fingernail under that part. It comes off relatively easy. Remove the circuit. Probably a little bit of a pull there and a bit of a push here and be careful this is the inside of the iron pretty solid this circuit that you're looking at is a mains dimmer circuit similar to in your dining room you may have a switch on the wall with the dial 
and you can turn down the brightness of the lamp. Most important to note, coming out of the heating element over here, you only have two wires. There's a wire there. If you turn it over, there's a wire there. Those wires are to the heating element. If you had four wires coming out, two wires coming out here, two wires coming out here, that would mean that you've got a temperature reading device, probably a K-type thermistor, inside of the ceramic heating element. But this entry-level affordable soldering iron doesn't actually have that feature. What that really means is this little temperature dial is not actually giving you a temperature. This soldering iron works on the idea that it's reasonably well thermally balanced. If you turn the temperature right down on this iron, don't operate it without the cover, you'll get a horrible electric shock which could be potentially lethal. If you turn it down, it's a really nice thermally balanced soldering iron. And if you turn it up to there, it's very, very hot. I wouldn't run it at that hot setting. You're going to damage your robot kit. You're going to damage printed circuit boards. You can always leave this iron on the coolest setting. The soldering iron that you see up on the screen right now, that would be my first choice. You just dial the temperature in. You can dial in 340 degrees, 360 degrees. If you're doing a job where you need extra heat, you can bump the heat up. You have a real-time seven-segment LED digital display of the temperature, but at 1,800 Rand, that's quite a lot of money if you're just getting started in robotics. Maybe you would be better off spending your money on electronic parts, bits for your robot, Bluetooth modules, modules to link your robot to the Internet of Things. A soldering iron like this is quite capable of doing excellent work if you are careful in the way you use it, if you wipe it on the sponge every time you pick it up, if you keep the temperature dial down low, 